That wild video, an airline employee steals a passenger plane from Seattle's SeaTac airport, then proceeds to do stunts before crashing. Just incredible video capturing his maneuvers, doing rolls in the air. Eyewitnesses on the ground shocked at what they were seeing. Now, initially, they didn't know what the man's motives were. Fighter jets were sent out. There were concerns this could be terror related. Yeah, that plane eventually went down in flames on a nearby island, and ABC's Ariel Reshef has been following the story all night and has all the latest details this morning. Ariel, good morning. Good morning to you guys. The employee somehow commandeering the cockpit of that empty prop plane, air traffic control desperately trying to to coax him out of the sky. Authorities say the doomed flight was in the air about an hour before it crashed. This morning, dramatic video after authorities say an airline employee stole this plane, bypassing security before taking off. Are you sure he's not going to hit us? <sighs> the wild scene unfolding Friday night at Seattle Tacoma Airport. I just kind of want to do a couple maneuvers to see what it can do. I put it down. Officials say it started around 8 p.m. local time. A 29 year old Horizon Air grounds employee getting into the cockpit of one of the company's empty planes. Oh, oh my God. What is happening right now? People on the ground capturing the errant flight's every move as it made loops, rolled in the sky, and even plunged toward the water. If it went straight down, and I was like, oh man, it's going to crash. Like, what is happening? It was really scary. And then all of a sudden it came back up. NORAD scrambling fighter jets from Portland to intercept the plane as air traffic control kept in contact with the employee, desperately trying to help him land. I got a lot of people that care about me. It's going to disappoint them to, to hear that I did this. I would like to apologize to each and every one of them. The man flying for more than an hour doing stunts like this. Nah, everything's peachy. Just did a little circle. It's beautiful. I think I got some gas to go check out uh, the Olympics. Just did a loop de loop. Eventually crashing on Keytron Island, 25 miles from the airport. The fiery wreckage seen here in this wooded area. The employee did not survive. Officials saying his lack of flying skills and reckless piloting caused the plane to go down. I wouldn't know how to land it. I wasn't really planning on landing it. The dangerous spectacle temporarily shutting down the airport, causing major delays, halting departures, even forcing many flights to divert. All I know is that we landed and we were sitting in a long line just waiting. It's really just hard to believe. No one on the ground was hurt. The CEO of Alaska Airlines, which operates Horizon, saying this morning his company is working with all authorities as they investigate how this could have happened. The FBI released a statement saying it is looking into this incident, but guys, so far there does not appear to be any nexus to terrorism. It looks like it had something to do with mental health, though, yeah. for sure. I mean, it's ordeal. heartbreaking to hear that exchange so between sad. he and air traffic control. Thank and you. And he seems so casual about the whole thing, too. No. Yeah. incredibly yeah. terrifying. He yeah. talks about flying the plane. And, and that he's played video games in the past and knows wow. how to do oh. this. And then we see the outcome of this. It's All just right. horrific. Wow. Thank you very much, Ariel. And earlier I spoke with John Waldron. He was an eyewitness who saw the chaos in the sky. He captured it on his phone. And John, good morning to you. We, we want to thank you so much for joining us. This is a busy area. It's close to the airport. So you're used to seeing a lot of traffic in the sky. But when did you know that there was something different about what you were seeing? What really looked at place to me was the fact that they were following this little twin engine mm. turboprop around. Um, I just saw the, the fighters behind this aircraft and I, I started rolling the tape. Um, and this this was, you, you called it a turboprop. It was a commercial plane, a Q400. It, it seats 76 passengers. So it's not just a small little prop plane. How bizarre was it to see it doing stunts and barrel rolls? As I'm recording this, um, all of a sudden, this little turboprop, he pulls the stick back or the yoke back and puts this thing straight up in the air. I thought, oh, my God, he's going he's gonna to stall the thing out and he's going to crash. This is not going to be good. And he recovered. I was actually getting ready to throw my phone down and run for the hills. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And that's when I, 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 everything just broke loose. I saw a plume of smoke, a quick flash of flame, and then... Of course, the sound of the explosion mm -hmm. reached where we were all at, and uh, my heart just sank. I thought, my God, I think that plane just went down. Mm -hmm. Did he, you from, know, from, uh, what, from what you saw, did he look like an experienced pilot? Did he look like he knew what he was doing? Uh, at first, he did. In fact, there was one point before I started uh, 
doing the video where it looked like he was on final approach to the uh, Tacoma Narrows Airport. Um, it looked like he either didn't have a lot of flight experience or uh, he was just a stunt pilot, maybe practicing for an air show. But it, it was definitely bizarre. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't, wasn't anything I planned to see tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Well, John, we are grateful for your time. We're grateful that you shared your video with us. We do want to remember that this airline employee did lose his life. But once again, we do want to thank you for joining us on this Saturday morning. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me on here with you tonight. Yeah, he thought at one point he was trying to land, but then heart sank when he saw yeah. the smoke. So terrifying for those mm -hmm. witnesses. Amazing. We want to bring in now retired Colonel Steve Ganyard. Uh, Steve, thanks so much for joining us, giving us some perspective on all this. Authorities are saying this was an employee of the airline who was able to somehow get into the cockpit of the passenger plane at a major airport and take off. The big question, how can something like this happen, not just from a security standpoint, but the fact that he was able to maneuver the aircraft? Mm -hmm. When he was a uh, he was an airline employee and he was walking around doing his job and his job was to be around airplanes so he wouldn't have naturally raised any suspicions so if he wanted to do what he wanted to do and clearly this seemed like a planned suicide uh, attempt uh, he had uh, to do this nobody's going to say hey what are you doing when he's going on and doing his his uh, normal job you know when you get an airplane there's no keys going in the ignition if you can get in that locked front door uh, and you can teach yourself which you can uh, how to fly the airplane or at least how to start the airplane, then there's no reason that uh, that he couldn't have taken off and, and flown this airplane around. Steve, we see in the videos the F-15 jets following the plane in the sky. Take us inside the cockpit there. What are those jets trying to do in this kind of situation? At what point does shooting the plane down become an option? Yeah, Adrian, this is this has been particularly uh, important after 9-11 because in 9-11 they had the same situation where they had to consider shooting down an airliner. These are these are the uh, the guys out of uh, out of Portland. They're the Air National Guard. They're trained to do this. This is their primary job. They've gone through scenarios where, where they do the what if. Should I shoot now? They know where the legal boundaries are, but this is a subjective call. And I think as this went on, <clears throat> they could hear that this guy was not anything more than suicidal. He wasn't uh, looking to run this into the into the space needle. Uh, what he was doing was sort of a last joy ride. And so they probably sensed that, and the best they could do was to fly fairly loose formation and make sure that he, uh, you know, he talked to him and try to talk him out into unpopulated areas. But uh, very sad, but it mm -hmm. is a judgment call uh, on these uh, Air Force pilots. And Steve, real quick, just to piggyback off of <clears throat> Witt's point, isn't it worrisome that this could happen so easily? How do we prevent Prevent something like this from happening again. Yeah, Paul, I think in this case, it's one of these where he really wanted to do it. He practiced. You know, I looked up this morning, and there's not one, but there are three separate, you know, uh, home computer flight programs for this particular airplane. So he went in and he learned how to start it, uh, you know, $59.99, and you can learn how to start and at least manipulate the controls of almost any airplane in the world. So he breaks into the, to the, uh, to the cabin. He knows where the electrical switches are. He knows how, based on this PC game, how to start it up he takes it off and we heard very clearly that he had no intention of landing he got what he wanted out of it and uh, unfortunately it's a very sad end to his life yes, wonder, yes. you wonder if there were warning signs you wonder if any of his co-workers Absolutely. noticed anything strange about him a big wake-up call for the airline industry uh, Steve Ganyard Colonel uh, retired Colonel thank you so much for your time thank we you. appreciate it Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.